joined us so far. I think we've got a few more people um, joining, but I will kick off so that we can make the most of the time that we have together. My name is Robin Vernon Harkle. I'm a senior programme manager at the Lord Mayor's Appeal. And before we start, I'm just going to run through a couple of housekeeping points with everybody. You'll see that you're all on mute. If, if we could ask you please to stay on mute throughout the duration of the meeting. This just helps to guard against any sort of background noise or, or interference um, with the sound. So thank you for that. We are recording the webinar today as well, and we can share a copy with you afterwards. As you can see, we are sharing slides. So if you would like to be able to see both the slides and the speakers next to one another, if you click the view option tab at the top of your screen, you'll be able to select side by side view as well. And we will be having a Q&A session at the end of the event today. So please do use the chat function to put your questions in. Um, feel free to do this throughout the, um, throughout the event this morning and we will facilitate your questions um, on your behalf to the speakers as well. So really encourage you to uh, use this as an opportunity to get uh, some great pointers from our speakers today. This is the uh, second webinar in our 2020 This Is Me webinar series. And really the purpose of today is to share best practice and practical advice on how you can encourage your employees to share their lived experience and share their stories of mental health. And how we can do that also um, thinking at the moment when most of us are working remotely. And that's why I'm absolutely delighted to have Joe Cole and Nikki McGowan from UBS and Susanna Winter from Baker McKenzie with us today. Both organisations have been involved in This Is Me since 2017 and have a wealth of experience in creating This Is Me storytelling campaigns in a number of different formats. So they will be able to share their, their great expertise with you today on how to help you um, encourage your employees to take part as well. Before I hand over to our speakers, I'm just going to give a very quick introduction into what This Is Me is for any organisations who might be newer who are joining us today. And also just to touch briefly on why we should focus on storytelling. Why, why is it important? So This Is Me really supports organisations to end the stigma around mental health in their workplace and with the aim to create healthier and more inclusive cultures to improve employee well-being. And we do that in a number of ways, which you can see on the slide here, um, through a number of tools to support organizations to raise awareness through our Green Ribbon campaign, uh, which I know many of you participated in for this Mental Health Awareness Week. So that was fantastic to see and thank you for your support. Um, supporting organisations to open up the conversation and challenge those stereotypes and myths around mental health in the workplace through This Is Me storytelling and also supporting organisations to build the skills of their employees to look after their own well-being but also to manage conversations around mental health more confidently through our Wellbeing in the Workplace e-learning tool. So what we're focusing on today is our This Is Me storytelling tool. And really at the crux, this is a toolkit to help you go about crafting a This Is Me storytelling campaign um, and getting your employees to share their lived experience of mental health, uh, mental ill health or mental health challenges they might have experienced. If you're not registered for This Is Me, I'd really encourage you to, as then you get access to our How To Toolkit, which really provides sort of practical steps on how you can start thinking about that campaign how to get um, your employees involved, what format that could look like. But we do know from organisations that often the first sort of you know, challenge can be actually how do you get your employees, your colleagues to participate and get involved. And that's really what we're, we're focusing on today. And I guess the question is why, why do we do storytelling? Um, what's the purpose of it? Why is it um, important for us to do as organisations? 
And really from our research over the last five years and working with um, our This Is Me businesses, we know that storytelling not only has a really direct impact on people and businesses in terms of increasing awareness, encouraging more people to talk openly about mental health, challenging those stereotypes and really helping to reduce the stigma. Um, and you can see here on, on the screen, the percentages of organizations from our last annual survey in 2019. But what we also know is that This Is Me is a really powerful tool and can act as a really powerful catalyst for wider change within an organization and, and really creating that culture and that foundation to support an organization's wider mental health agenda as well. Um, we know this because we work with organizations and monitor them against the 10 measures that you can see on the screen. Uh, we believe that if organizations are achieving seven or more of those measures, that they're really making tangible and sustainable change in the way that their organization thinks and acts around mental health. And what we found from our research is for those organizations who haven't done storytelling, only 28% of those are um, achieving seven or more of those measures. By contrast, when we then look at organizations who have done This Is Me storytelling, that number grows to 87% of organizations are achieving seven, of the, seven or more of those measures. So This Is Me storytelling not only has a direct impact on us and our workplaces individually, but really can help support your wider mental health agenda as well. But I think the most uh, powerful way to experience that impact of, of storytelling is to sort of experience it yourself directly. So I'm really delighted to share with you one of our This Is Me uh, films. This is UBS's This Is Me film um, from uh, last year. And just before I play that, just to let you know that this uh, film does um, contain references to suicide and miscarriage for anybody that might find that upsetting. Um, to sort of mute your screen now. Hi, I'm Nikki. I work in UBS University in HR. Hi, my name is Paul. I'm the CFO for Wealth Management UK in Jersey. Hi, my name is Brendan and I work in Group Technology. I'm Paolo Croce and I look after FRC in EMEA. I'm Chris, I'm a project manager in Group Technology. I'm happily married to Sally and we've been together for almost 13 years. I enjoy running and keeping fit and I also enjoy traveling. I'm originally from an area close to Venice. I've been in the business 25 years, lived in London for 20, married to an Italian, and I have an 11-year-old boy and live in central London. I live in Surrey and I have two kids. I'm married. Uh, one is nine, the other one is 14. So I have the joy of the teenagers at home. I live in Berkshire with my family, my lovely wife Melanie, and my two sons, Matthew and James. I'm married and I have a little boy who's just coming up to one. He keeps me busy. From an early age, I was aware of mental health issues. When I was growing up as a teenager, both my father and my older brother suffered from mental health problems. It became apparent to me that when I started work, I'd have to look after my own mental health. And this is something I've always tried to look after. A couple of years ago, I had a miscarriage and I found this really affected me. Although I had lots of support from friends and family, I felt really lonely. And this is because although it's so common, up to one in four pregnancies can end in miscarriage, I feel that no one really talks about it. I've always been a bit melancholy, but in recent years my anxiety has got worse. This resulted in a shutdown of communications, um, which is what tends to happen to me, and uh, that badly affected my work, uh, the firm and my line manager. In May 2015, um, on a sunny Monday morning, I was called into my boss's office. I first thought I was in trouble, then I realised he called me in to tell me that a friend of mine had taken his own life the Sunday before. The impact was absolutely devastating. In 2016, just over a year after the news, I was myself diagnosed with depression. I then realised that diagnosis was 
just the beginning of the end because this was something that was going on and I had to face up to the demons that were living within me. I was plagued by thoughts, almost constant thoughts of suicide, which culminated in me having picking out a favorite tree and always carrying a rope in my car, just because I knew if the pain ever got too bad, I'd always be able to stop it. With the help of our occupational health doctor and a recommended therapist, I realized that while I didn't yet care about my own life, I realized the devastating effect it would have on my family, particularly my two sons. Due to work-related stress, my father suffered from depression for a number of years. I feel it's now time for people to start talking about mental health. In the 1980s, when he suffered from mental health problems, it was effectively a taboo. And whilst it was talked about within the family, it really wasn't talked about in the wider open public. I really struggled with my mental health. And at one point I felt really low and I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, which was really scary. I've been going through a stressful time myself over the last two years. And the last Christmas I got a very nice present from my wife, who's starting to become a nutritionist this summer. I got obviously a personalized nutritional plan, but at the same time a few coaching sessions with a meditation coach that helped me a lot with my stress. That had a real impact in my professional performance, in the relationship with my colleagues, but at the same time it made me a happier father and husband at home. I'm determined, on behalf of my dad, to promote mental health awareness and encourage people to talk to each other and, where necessary, reach out to others and share their problems. It was a video similar to this one that helped me face that challenge and overcome it. My message, I suppose, is, is to reach out. There's always going to be someone there, whether it's a colleague, whether it's a friend, family, or even the firm itself. They've been there to help me and they will help you too. The therapy really helped me to understand that I was in fact grieving and I needed time in order to get better. I spoke to my manager who was really supportive and explained that I needed to have more flexible working but that ultimately my output would not be affected. Luckily he was really understanding. Two years ago, I got inspired by the activities of the Headscape Network in the UK, and I decided to join David Sohn in co-sponsoring it. The level of stress in our industry, if anything, is going up. And we need to make sure that the health of our people is at the core of what we do. I'm Paul, and this is me. I'm Chris, and this is me. I'm Paolo, and this is me. I'm Brendan, and this is me. I'm Nikki, and this is me. Great. So I'm now delighted to hand over to Joe Cole and Nikki McGowan from UBS, um, who were instrumental in preparing and creating that video, as well as their other storytelling campaigns that they've done at UBS. So Joe and Nikki, thank you so much. Thank you, Robin. It's, I can't say it's a massive privilege to be here today, and I, I do thank you for this opportunity. One of the, the, the important things for me is talking about it. Um, uh, that mental ill health has a massive stigma even today. Um, what hopefully we can talk about is how to get that message out, how to make it every day, how to make it uh, something that is normal, <laughs> normalize it as much as we can. If we can just move on. Um, so what we're going to talk about here is how to get people involved. Obviously Nikki and I are part of a, quite a large organization. I've been with UBS now for about eight years and got involved with the Headscape Network, which obviously you saw Paolo talk about there. We're very lucky to have him and another sponsor called David um, who get involved and actually, you know, come and do some of the activities with us. So that's, so that's really great because senior involvement is a key topic here. And Nikki will talk about that in a minute. From our perspective, it's really important that we are advocates of talking about it and that we are able to go out there and you saw Nikki in that video there which is absolutely lovely and I forget actually how moving it is when I watch it again and um, I did my video a couple of years earlier to that and I think um, from my perspective it's my son my son has schizophrenia and I just remember years ago it wasn't talked about there were there were things that people didn't talk about and they hid it under the carpet they didn't want it out there in some in some families they felt ashamed and, and mine was one of those not necessarily 
in relation to my son, but the extended family, you know, they didn't want to talk about it. And it's very, very obvious that it was there. So what we want to do today is, is talk about how you get people engaged in telling their story. It's, it's a great opportunity and people need to see it like that. They don't always see it as an opportunity. They see it as a massive challenge. And so you need to take them along on the crest of the wave, basically. If you think about Mental Health Awareness Week and all of the activities that we've just been involved in, we have an ideal opportunity to use this and to say to people, it is important, the message is out there, people have an illness, it's like any other illness, it might affect you mentally, but eventually it will affect you physically, you know, so it will manifest. And it is important to tell that story. Think about all those activities we've just come through. And I think most of you, probably because you're on this call today, will have been aware of Mental Health Awareness Week. We do have a focus at the moment. All of those things are out there. We've just come through the campaign again. So let's use that. Let's get on the crest of that wave and let's say, well, who has a story? Let's go out there and ask people who has a story. It's really important that we that we think about the spread of how far it goes. And it doesn't matter whether it's the smallest of conversations. You can speak to somebody and you can tell them your story and people start to open up. We had um, a call yesterday with somebody who's actually on the committee and Nikki directly approached her and said, would you like to tell your story? And she's very, very reticent and quite taken aback that we'd asked her directly. But actually, when she thought about it, and the longer we talked to her about other things, she was coming round to the idea and she said, do you know what, it's actually really important. And I think it would really help other people. And that's where we're trying to get to. So there are lots and lots of different approaches. We can directly approach people when we hear their story. We can also think about those people that we touch on a daily basis. And if we think about the pandemic and everything that's happened to us in the last weeks and months, this is an opportunity to look at mental health and well-being. And, and I know that I have people come to me every other day and they say, I find it a real challenge. This working from home business, I'm not really liking it. I actually like being with people. I like being in teams and I like talking to other people. And, and I also know that in UBS, what they've said to us is try not to turn your video cameras on because, you know, it, it, it interferes with the bandwidth and you actually, that's really antisocial. <laughs> and what we try to do is encourage where we are talking in smaller groups, one to ones, that we do actually to switch on our cameras and we do see people. It's really, really important that we keep in touch with people. And I think as part of this pandemic and the situation that we're in, we need to be asking people properly are you okay? Are you really okay? One of the things that we are looking at promoting is uh, what's your score or what's your number? And I know that uh, Rob Stevenson, as part of Inside Out, uses this a lot and he actually uses it on his email and he will put every single day, he will change his email signature and he will say what he is out of 10. And he said, on a good day, I can be eight or nine, he said, and on a bad day, I can be three or even two, he said, and we do have those days and we need to start recognizing that. And there are little things that we can put in place that get people talking about it. So when you do, when you do send your emails out, if you're in the mood that day, you can put your score on there and you could say, actually today I'm feeling seven out of 10 and you know, I'm feeling pretty good today. Whereas other days you might not feel like that. And sometimes it also opens up the conversation. If you're on the phone to somebody you say, how are you feeling out of 10? And they're much more open to telling you they feel at a five or they feel at a three. Um, whereas if you say, are you OK? Then people tend to just say yes, you know, and that closes down the conversation and it doesn't really tell people how you're feeling. So there's all these little techniques that we can get people to open up. One of the golden opportunities we have, and we're doing it on this call today, is this virtual web conferencing. If we roll back three months, there are a lot of people we're not happy to go on camera. They didn't want their faces seen. You know, we were very judgmental of ourselves. Those barriers are breaking down. And I would say that we get our nans, we get our mums on video now. My friend, um, she said her, her mom started using it. She's in her eighties. She started using video conferencing. And she said for the first three times that she spoke to her, saw the top of her head. But after a while, her, her mum got to, got used to it and, and eventually now she does dances on video camera and you know she's really open about it and it's the same when we start talking to people about mental health 
it feels uncomfortable and sometimes we can we can have those conversations and people don't necessarily want to open up but then when they do they feel that sense of relief and then they start to talk about it people are so much more used to video conferencing now there is less fear of going in front of the camera so i think it's easier for us to put people there to so that they can tell their story now, I'm not going to lie, it's a challenge at the moment because we're not in the office and we can't sit there with a camera and we can't do a really snappy video recording, but it's a message that matters. It's important that we can just take those snapshots of people. We can say to them, you know, it doesn't have to be a polished message. We just need you to speak out. We just want you to tell your story. And you can see in the video that we did that quite often, you know, people tell us some very very challenging and very moving things and I think sometimes it's quite difficult to encourage people to talk in that particular setting but once they start to talk to you um, you could even do it as a conversational piece you know you could ask the questions and they could ask them back to you there's lots of different ways of using video conferencing now, and it's a lot lot more flexible so look at every opportunity I would say rule nothing out I think also we need to look at um, the more diverse elements of it. And it was something that we actually had a good conversation about yesterday. Um, there's, it's very topical about racism in the news at the moment. There's a lot of people feeling anxiety about that. And there may be people who want to talk about that and that diversity and how they're feeling challenged and how they're feeling anxious. So we could also ask people of lots of different diverse elements. We could say to them, please come and talk to us about how you're feeling, what this means to you and how it's affecting you. And that story is just as important. So don't limit it to just mental ill health or a mental condition. There's a big range of diversity out there. There's opportunities pretty much wherever you look. And what I would say is if you open yourself, people will be open with you. I've always been really open about talking about my son and his schizophrenia. And I know that in the early days, people were a little bit taken aback by that but one thing I will say is as soon as I was open they had so many questions everybody would say oh well what's that been like for you how does it manifest when did you get it what does it feel like and they really really do want to know so it's opening up that conversation and you'll find that there are lots of people out there who have a story maybe similar to yours or maybe similar to somebody that you know um, have a chat with them, be open about yourself and be open about how you're feeling just today. I'm going to hand over to Nikki. She's got, um, she's going to talk a little bit about senior engagement and how we do that. Um, Nikki. Great. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, so similar to Joe, I've been involved in Headscape, our mental health network since 2016. So it started as a grassroots organisation in UBS off the back of a mental health awareness week that was, I think, ran by our uh, ability network at the time. So for me, I've just had a real interest in this as a topic at UBS. And I think it's amazing the impact all of these our network has had, but also yeah, the, the, the stats that Robin mentioned at the beginning, the actual impact of a This Is Me video and sharing the stories, I think that's where you can actually see the culture start to shift and change. And I think personally, I've seen it really change in, in the UK in particular, where, where Headscape is. So obviously UBS is a massive, large Swiss-based organisation. Um, so at first it was a little bit difficult, but you find the more that you get people to share, the more open this conversation has become. Um, and my, my day job actually is looking at a leadership training at UBS and I'm trying to filter all these pieces in because I think it's so important. Um, so trying to get people to talk about well-being, about mental health. And as Joe mentioned, the Watch Your Score campaign, hopefully want to launch that as well. So all of these things are so important because I do think just getting people to talk to open up and to share their story can just make a world of difference when it comes to when it comes to this in terms of the culture and the way we see other people and sometimes just one small story even if it's just a blog post on connections can actually make a world of difference and can actually just even if it's just one person it can make someone else open up or even talk to someone whether that be their doctor their line manager or even their partner or even themselves so it sometimes people don't realize what they're going through themselves and it, it takes someone going through something similar to realize actually maybe I'm not as, as well as I could be right now um, which is something that I personally found helpful as well looking at the this is me videos 
So as Joe mentioned, senior involvement is really important and we, we make sure we have really good senior sponsors of Headscape. So you saw one in the video, Paolo. We also have David Stones. Um, so we are really encouraging the senior sponsors to take part in the This Is Me video. So for the This Is Me video we're doing this year, we're hoping that, that David will take part in that as well. Um, and again, the great thing about that is it doesn't actually matter what type of story they have. It's not a competition of who has kind of the best story. It's about being honest and being vulnerable and saying, actually, we're not 100% perfect all the time. Um, this is where I struggle, whether it's them personally, whether it's just a particular issue with, with stress, as Paolo mentioned, in terms of their meditation, or um, it could be something as from a family member, which, which Joe mentioned as well. Um, but I think it's just really important to encourage senior sponsors to share their story and to explain the impact that the story sharing has um, and the reasons why they need to do it. They're doing it to help other people and to show that level of vulnerability, which will inevitably trickle down in the firm. So I really hope that we'll get more senior leaders on, on the next uh, talk as well, because I do think it makes a re really good impact. And also to pick up on the point Joe made about diversity, I think, again, now more than ever we just need to make sure that everyone's voice is being heard you know this is me is a great campaign um so probably keeping in touch with other networks so obviously because we're quite a big bank we have other networks uh, the cultural awareness network and, and a bame network as well so keeping them connected and making sure that everyone has has their chance to speak and share their story just to encourage other people to do the same and and really kind of bring their whole self to work which is ultimately what we're trying to achieve here so um as Joe mentioned, approaching people directly, it, it sounds perhaps a little bit intimidating at first, but we've sent out a few blanket emails to people. And yeah, you can read an email and think, yeah, OK, I could do that. But is my story good enough? You know, do, do what people think if I share my story? There's lots of kind of issues. And I'm speaking from a personal experience here. Um, that you'd probably go through before sharing your story. And actually for me personally, it wasn't until someone came up to me and said, I know that what you've experienced, would you like to share it on This Is Me? And actually someone asking me that directly made me realize actually, yeah, what I've been through was really difficult. And if I'd have seen a similar message at the time, I might've realized a bit earlier that what I was going through actually wasn't, I wasn't mentally um, healthy at the time, maybe realized a little bit sooner. So I thought if I could just get that missed out because I'd never been shy about talking about my experience because what I realized personally was that the more I talked about it, the better I became. And the more I talked to friends about my experience, I realized they'd had the experience as well and they'd suffered as well or, or pushed it down and pushed it back just because of the nature of everything and the fact that people still don't talk about um, miscarriages. It's still a little bit of a taboo. Um, so for me, talking was really the remedy of my mental health experience. That's why I found it really important to actually share my story. So I think when we go out to people to get people to share their story, I think wherever possible role model, even if it's just doing a, a blog post or a, an audio talk, um, share your story as well um, and ask people directly as well. And even if it's not their personal experience, it could be someone that they know or a family member however big or however small it's really important to get people to share their stories we also have a great network of mental health champions as well so some of you may already have this i think there's the company the mental health first aid um organization that run training for kind of creating um a support group emotional support group for internal employees so we have a a, a great range of mental health champions that support employees emotionally if they have any issues and of course in this in this environment as well they've been particularly busy so we're looking at training a whole other batch and we've had lots of interest in people wanting to be trained up as well which I think is a really good sign but asking that group of people as well going in actually creating a meeting to, to ask them specifically and, and explain you know what this is me campaign would entail and also anyone else anyone else in in terms of well-being or mental health any other ambassadors that you have in your organization too um, and then in terms of getting them ready as well, we found it useful just to show them the This Is Me videos. So send them the link to This Is Me. We have an internal intranet page as well with our videos. Um, just so they then feel part of that bigger picture and, and they know, you know why it's important and they can see the impact of the stories as well, just to really encourage people. And then another thing that we like to do is actually um, 
get them to think about the prompt questions ready to prepare for the meeting so even if they're they've just they're not 100 percent sure if they're going to do it i i just send them the link to the videos and just say look here are the kind of questions you'll be answered i'm happy to have like a q a session or to help you kind of understand a little bit more about what it entails or we can have a practice run um, and then of course the thing that's a little bit tricky in this environment we normally get our internal tv team to help create the videos which obviously they did a great job for the last one um, obviously we're now remote so we're going to get people to record on their their own personal devices and, and send it into us which has pros and cons i think some people might prefer that environment i think other people might find it more challenging so really trying to be with them along every step of the way and, and provide as much support um, for the individual and as much structure as possible really to help them create that video. And then obviously the multiple takes, I think this is more if, if you're actually doing a, a video in the office where you might have to take takes a few times. I think it's quite an emotional thing to, to say sometimes out loud. That's why I think maybe having it on your, on your personal device might be a bit of an advantage because you can do the takes um, in the privacy of your own home or your own room. Um, so it gives you that chance to give it a few goes. Um, also perhaps recommend practicing it first on audio and recording yourself as audio only is, is a good, is a good uh, tip for them as well. So I think for me, that's uh, the key tips from a UBS perspective. Um, and again, just reiterating the importance of the real benefit of people sharing their stories. And if you can give examples of that, and those stats that Robin shared at the beginning was great as well. So um, it's really important to, to show them that, the benefit to, to yourself as individuals, but also the other people that they can help and they can touch as a result of creating this video and the impact that it has. Um, so no matter what what story they have, um, what type of story, just encourage that completely and, and always um, encourage people to share and be as open as they can be. I think that's that's what we're all about and that's what will ultimately change the culture. So, yeah, that's it from from me. Thank you. Wonderful, Nikki and Joe. Thank you so much. That was um, incredibly helpful. And. Um, as you both said, especially at the moment, we we all have stories to tell. So often the power of reaching out to somebody directly, um, not something to be afraid of. So that was really, really insightful. So thank you both. Um, I'm now delighted to hand over to Susanna from Baker McKenzie. So again, Baker McKenzie have been involved with This Is Me um, for a number of years and have run multiple storytelling campaigns um, in their workplace as well. So Susanna, I will pass over to you to, to share your experiences and sort of top tips um, and overcoming those challenges of how to encourage people to, to share their stories and take part. Thank you, Robin. It's great to be here um, and part of this webinar today. I'm Susanna. I've worked at Baker McKenzie for about 16 years. I am CSR manager now, which means that I manage the charitable partnerships and employee volunteering programs, among other things. I'm also co-chair of the mental health employee group within the firm, along with one of our corporate partners. I'm a member of a couple of choirs. I love walking long distances. I really adore the theatre and I miss it hugely through lockdown. I've been married for 30 years. My co-worker is working alongside me, um, although you can't see him because of the, the background. I deal with anxiety. Anxiety is something I've lived with since, since I was quite a small child. Um, I don't have time to go into the reasons for that, but it's something that I've needed to learn to, to live with and to a certain extent control. My sister has bipolar depression. That's had a massive impact on my life. I lost my dad six weeks ago. I miss him dreadfully. He dealt with a lot of depression during the course of his life. Um, and also OCD. I don't know who's dialed into this call and most of you probably don't know me. But part of the reason why I told you a little bit about myself was I hope to demonstrate that even though you don't know me, you can perhaps know a little bit about me just within from the few moments that I've been speaking. 
I believe really strongly, and we all do at Baker McKenzie in the power of storytelling. I hope you'll forgive that I'm reading from my notes, so I will look up and down a few times. I wanted to do that rather than using slides, but do feel free to ask me any questions or get in touch afterwards. We've been part of the This Is Me campaign since the beginning. Uh, I'm proud that Baker McKenzie is part of the steering group for This Is Me. It's a really important initiative and I hope that I can share some good tips on how to get involved. When we first started thinking about storytelling, inspired among other people by Barclays, um, who we work with very closely as a law firm, um, we were nervous about whether people would share stories. And so we took some quite small steps to begin with. We invited in an external speaker, uh, the fantastic John Binns, a really senior businessman who dealt with a huge mental health breakdown and come through it and come back to work. That was really impactful. We were lucky enough to have some budget to invite him in. When we approached the whole This Is Me campaign, that was a whole new ball game. We were asking people from within the organisation to share their stories. So when we took that really nervous step to ask people to share, we didn't have any big expectations at all. We had all sorts of contingency plans as to what we would do if nobody wanted to share. But in fact, 15 people came forward. We didn't initially make a video. What we did was to ask people to write a few paragraphs in the form of a blog, as um, Joe and Nikki have, have mentioned already in the course of this session. And their stories were shared in the form of an email that went to every member of the London office. That was quite a nerve wracking thing for all of those employees, but it was also very powerful. Each person who shared a story whether it was one of anxiety or depression, um, whether it was somebody else's mental health or their own, found that people reached out to them. People wanted to ask questions. People wanted to express the fact that they had been there as well. It was powerful. We also had a poster campaign around the building that year where we posted a picture and a few lines from the person's story so that people could start to identify those people in the lift or in the canteen when they were queuing for their lunch. In year two, we made a video. Again, we were delighted that a few people stepped forward. Um, I'm sure you'll all agree that the UBS video was incredibly powerful. And we had a similar experience at Baker McKenzie, just the fact that people were prepared to step in front of a camera and share who they were in that way was incredibly powerful. We're still learning. This year, um, we have again shared some stories. As others have already said on this webinar, the pandemic has had a really interesting side effect in that well being is being spoken about front and centre by really senior members of the organisation in a way that I've not known before. And so, actually, when we put out a call for stories this year, we again had a number of really willing participants. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment, but what have we learned so far? We've learned to take small steps. People might not be ready to give their whole mental health story immediately, but perhaps they'd be willing to share a resilience tip. One thing that worked really well for us was that on World Mental Health Day in October, we just put up a board outside our office canteen and invited people to share some tips for how they manage their own mental health, provided some pens and some post-its. It was very low tech, but that board was full very quickly. And it was probably, oddly, one of the most impactful things that we had done. Um, we specifically asked some of our partners, some of the more senior managers to put some resilience tips on that board and to share them. This week, during Mental Health Awareness Week, we had a variety of stories, and I want to share one particular tip that I, I've been really struck by. 
the stories that have been shared quite predictably because as some of you will know women tend to talk more easily around mental health than men that's a massive generalization but it's one of those generalizations that does actually have quite a lot of evidence attached to it bearing in mind that I'd had so many responses from females I sent an email around to some of the male senior partners that I know within the office and just said this is all great would any of you be willing to share a story and I had a message back from one of our most senior partners saying well I don't really have a mental health story but I do have a kind of preventative story I asked him to share it with me he emailed it through and actually what he shared was incredibly powerful he had stepped back for a little while because he had been aware that he was heading towards a massively stressful situation and he could spot some signs in himself of impending depression and anxiety he'd been able to take control of that it was a really powerful story and he was really surprised at how many other partners approached him as a result of that to say that was really brave of you to share I've been there I have felt like that actually I think I need to take some action so that I don't get to that situation another person shared their experiences of dealing with OCD in lockdown um, again she was quite hesitant is this really a mental health issue that I need to share it seems quite trivial compared with some again overwhelmed by the number of people who got back to her afterwards and said yes me too these are some of the tips that I have how has the storytelling affected people who share their stories what's the point of doing it I won't share for too long I know there are other people who, who need to speak and hopefully we'll have some time for some questions but just a few things that other people have told me that have resulted from them sharing their stories it's resulted in greater connection within the organization people have reported their networks growing the fact that they feel trusted um, that their managers far from dismissing them for having um, mental health issues have been so impressed with their bravery in doing so that it's opened up fantastic conversations within the department one of our departments now has um, a regular mental health slot in every single department meeting. And that's as a direct result of a colleague sharing their mental health story through This Is Me. Um, that's fantastic. Um, number, a number of people have become mental health first aiders after sharing their stories, which is obviously a great long-term benefit for us as an organization our managing partner and I know this is partly as a result of the pandemic situation now regularly refers to well-being in his weekly video that goes around to the firm um, talks about how he is I might suggest the, the number system I think that's a great idea I'm nicking that one sorry UBS um, another department now has a well-being subcommittee that's just got together because one of their number shared their story um, and they realised that they, their balance had got completely out of kilter and they wanted to be focusing on well-being. I think <coughs> that a measure of the success of This Is Me is the permanent changes that take, part, that take place. And I can certainly say that um, that's something that's happened within Baker McKenzie. Um, there are some safeguarding issues. It's a nerve-wracking thing to do, to take that step. I once um, abseiled off a building for charity and I've never been so scared as the moment where I turned my back um, and took that first step off the building, even though I knew there was plenty of safety harness there. Um, we do try and support the person who is telling their story every single step of the way. Um, we try to make sure that they're happy with the wording i always say to people who are writing their story would you be happy for your best friend to read this would you be happy for the most senior person in the organization to read this would you have to be happy for your manager to read this so we don't hit that send button until the person is is as happy as they possibly can be i don't want to talk for too long i want there to be time for, for questions but i hope that's given you just a bit of inspiration, a few ideas, and some reassurance. I'm 
thoroughly committed to this as me. I think it's a fantastic initiative and I'd be delighted to chat with anybody who wants to, to know more about how to, to make it happen in your organisation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susanna. That was fantastic. And, and thank you to, to both UBS and, and Baker McKenzie. I think the range of um, ideas and, and tips that you shared, such as starting small, you know, you don't have to start with a film. The idea around sort of blogs and then poster campaign is, is really great. And sort of a number of ways that you can reach out and encourage people to get involved, um, showing them the impacts, sort of speaking to them directly, uh, working through your networks as well. And we we'll have a, a few minutes for those of us, those of you who can give us an extra five minutes of your time, we'll, we'll be incredibly grateful for that. Um, if anybody does have any questions, please do pop them in the chat. We've got a couple coming through. Um, I'm just gonna ask a question from um, my perspective and open it out both to um, both organizations, if you'd both like to answer or one or the other. Um, how, have you, um, how have you dealt with the situation when somebody has, um, approached you about sharing their story but you felt perhaps they weren't quite ready um, at that stage whether maybe they were still um, sort of dealing with their their experience um, could you just share with our audience how you might approach that situation as I know that can be something that people can feel quite daunted by I'm happy to go with that Susanna here um, I've had a very recent experience of that actually where somebody was very very open in their storytelling which was both um, inspiring but also um, we were very keen to protect him in, in his storytelling. Um, I think the key was communication really just to keep on um, I, I th and, and asking some really gentle questions around um, whether he was ready to share and at first he was absolutely um, adamant that he did but as he thought about it um, he then was able to think okay hang on maybe this is too raw maybe I'm still too upset maybe maybe I'm still living this too intensely to want to open it up to 800 other people in the organization um, it's very much a gently gently approach um, and I think if, if he'd insisted I would probably have wanted to let him do that but I did want to just be, be sure it's a tricky one yeah, I would, I would agree with you, Sana. I think what, what it is, quite often people, it is raw and they come immediately from having had that experience. I think the, the, you need to ask the question, what is the message that you want to get across? How do you want it? How do you want people to receive it? You know, do you want it to be a positive message? Do you want to tell your story? Everybody wants to hear your story. Um, would it be the right time? And over time, keep in touch with them, keep checking in and asking, you know, how do you feel about it now? Where are you on that journey? And, and how does that feel for you? You know, how do you want to approach that? How does your story change? And I think a lot of people will, will resonate with that because we do you take time as a great healer, right? And, and it becomes a positive message quite often after a while. Great, thank you both there. Um, we have a, a question from Manesh. Um, if both organisations could potentially share their top tip, if you had one tip for um, engaging your male members of staff to share their stories, have you done anything uh, slightly differently? Obviously, um, you mentioned a bit about this um, previously, but if you had one tip to share um, with the time. So mine would be, um, Susanna here, um, there's a couple of things. If you happen to have a bit of budget, I would very much recommend going down the route of getting an external speaker. Um, we did, in fact, we were lucky enough to be able to book uh, a former footballer who now is a um, coach and mentor in the mental health area who came in and did a tour. Really happy to share his details if anyone's interested. Um, I've never seen the room so full of men. That's a real cliche. I'm afraid it was true, though. Um, the other thing that I am making a note of from this year's Mental Health Awareness Week is to pick up on something that the male senior partner that I mentioned said. He said, I realise I've got a role in this. I need to go to some of my male colleagues and ask them to share their story. And he said, I can see why if you approach them, they might not feel willing. But if I did, they might. 
so I am shamelessly going to follow up on that and make sure that he follows through because I think that could be really powerful. Yeah, I think we have the same, Susanna, at UBS um, in terms of the, the speakers. We're always quite conscious of getting the, particularly the, the male employees involved by having those types of speakers and they've always been really well attended. Um, and I think off the back of that, we've had had a good range of, of people sharing their stories at UBS as well. And so I do think it, it, it does help. Yeah, the only thing I would add is the senior buy-in. As Nikki alluded to before, we've got a couple of really good sponsors and they're both men. And that always helps because if people see that their male counterparts and senior counterparts are happy to get involved, it gives them a good role model. That's great. Thank you all for sharing that. That was incredibly helpful and some great tips there. Uh, we do have some more questions, but unfortunately we've come to the end of our, our time for the webinar. But what I would um, advise anybody whose question hasn't been answered, do get in touch with us. Um, you can see our email address um, here. This is me at the Lord Mayor's Appeal. If you drop us an email with your question, we'll be very happy to help um, and provide further support. Um, Juliet, you also had a question around how to get sort of senior leaders involved. And we will um, approach these different topics throughout our webinar series this year. So how to get the senior management buy-in, um, how do you actually um, do a This Is Me film, what questions do you ask? So um, this is me looking at how to do it in smaller businesses as well. So um, I encourage you all to um, do keep in touch with us and sort of attend the other webinars that we have. Um, but just to wrap up and, and give you your, your time back before I'm sure your next meeting to say a really big thank you to Joe, Nikki and Susanna. Um, as they all said, they have been members of our steering group. They've been fantastic supporters of This Is Me. And I hope what their experiences have demonstrated is that it is a journey. Um, you know, these things can take time. But any steps that you are taking, those are steps in the right direction. So, uh, you know, don't give up. We're here to help. I'm sure, as Susanna said, we can share some contact details if you'd like to get in touch with the speakers and, and have a bit of a further conversation if they'd be happy to. So just a really big thank you all for the attendees as well. I know lots of you have been doing fantastic work already, really fantastic work over Mental Health Awareness Week. So we encourage you to sort of keep it up and keep in touch with us as well. Thank you everyone for joining us. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar soon. Thank you, Robin.